Hi everyone, my name is Muhammad Sufin. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you that how you know easily or quickly we can uh, remove the always on configurations by, for example, like removing the listener names, uh, you know, removing the databases from the available uh, databases and removing the replicas. Uh, so let me quickly show you how my cluster configuration would basically I do have right now. So I have, you know, two cluster groups uh, and as you can see that there are two IP addresses associated to these two, you know, always on or you can say available to serve. So I'm just to show you that. So this is what basically it, it looked like in, in the cluster configuration that you know I have two availability groups and uh, you know what IP addresses they are associated and what is basically the client access name so this is my availability group name and this is my listener name actually so so let's go to SQL server and you can see I have connected to my first SQL instance and I have these two availability groups this one and 103 so now uh, how basically we can you know remove uh, the ability group listener so if you see these basically names of the registered in the active directory so that when the client connects uh, you know it's easy to come in so it is a basically a single subnet but you can have multiple subnets so it is supported in uh, uh, having a multiple subnets but you have to remember that uh, only one subnet IP is online at a time so not getting into more into detail let me quickly show you how can we basically easily remove uh, the listener name. Uh, so this is the command basically the alter availability group, availability group name and remove the listener. This is the listener name. Uh, also remember that uh, one availability group can only have one listener name. You cannot have multiple listener names. So let me refresh. So as it will remove, it will remove the services as well. You can see that it is removing the registry uh, using cluster services and as well as the active directory object name. So once it is complete, you know, the client name will be removed from the active directory. Sorry, this, this is the one. So it has now, it has removed the IP address and everything. It will, you know, it will still running partially, but because this is the availability group name. So the client, client name will get deleted. Let me you can see it now. Okay. Uh, let, let's remove the database which is part of this. So there are a couple of ways of doing it, but I'm just telling you that how basically you can do it. You can use it, uh, you know, remove it from your primary replica uh, directly, or you can pause it, suspend it state first, and then you can remove it. It's all up to you. I have seen this scenario when, when any database which is, you know, very transactional, uh, and uh, you directly remove it, the primary database goes into recovery state. So I will suggest you to pause the database first, or you can say suspend it, and then you can, you know, remove it so that primary database should not go into recovery state. So, couple of seconds. So, it's completed. Now it will look like that the database has been paused for replication and just like you did, you can remove it. So as you will remove it, it will just go away from here. Now you can remove the replica, uh, you know, by, by choosing this name as you know, remove replica, replica name from the availability group name. So it's very simple. Now the other way is that, you know, you can just remove the availability group and you know it, it will take care of everything everything will associated all the configuration associated to this of that particular availability group will remove it so now once the availability group is removed or the, the the cluster service will also get removed from the cluster and the object name is already removed earlier so this is how and easily we can you know remove the services or configuration of all those on thank you for watching bye bye